Hey everyone, I'm back with some updates on my 3D printer project. Uh, I know it's been a little while, but I have actually been as busy as I can manage to be right now, uh, working out some issues with it and stuff, so I had to kind of hold off on making videos. So uh, a few of those issues, I inverted my Y-axis in software. Uh, it was backwards since the bed moves, not the print head, so I had to go ahead and invert that guy in uh, the Marlin firmware. It was pretty easy to do. It's kind of funny though, if you have one axis inverted, you end up with a mirrored version of what you expect. So uh, before all of the parts I printed, it didn't really matter, but it started to matter now with some of my new parts, so I uh, had to fix that. Uh, I've been having some major jamming issues in this Bowden setup. Uh, I think I can blame the E3D hot end, unfortunately. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it for the most part, but a lot of people tend to be having jamming issues specifically with PLA, not with ABS so much. I'm not really sure why. Uh, I haven't uh, printed ABS yet, so I can't say for sure, but slowing down the print from about 100 millimeters per second uh, XY feed rate, I don't know what that equates to uh, in extruder feed, but either way, that speed is too fast for what I'm trying to do. I think it has to do with this... Uh, transition zone down here where the plastic melts uh, it's just it's jamming up I, I can't really explain it much better than that right now but uh, I tried switching from the uh, 0.4 millimeter nozzle to the 0.6 millimeter nozzle which is actually what I'm running right now and it didn't make a whole lot of difference so I reseeded this a bunch of times and uh, it's okay I'm gonna go 70 millimeters a second or uh, yeah it's millimeters per second right now and I think that'll be fast enough for the volume of printing I'm doing. So uh, I'd love to do faster, but you know this is a Cartesian. All this stuff has to move around and start and stop. It's not like one of those nice deltas that just kind of does nice smooth moves. So anyway, uh, so I've been trying to minimize friction in this Bowden setup as much as possible, but I really think that the end uh, heated area, this E3D hot end, is what's kind of giving me some grief with jamming. So. Um, I keep I have a ton of torque on that thing. It'll snap the filament in the smallest little area. So uh, anyway, those are some things that uh, I've changed. Uh, prints are coming out pretty good now, I think. So I'm ready to do an upgrade that I've wanted to do from the beginning when I realized that I was actually hanging these uh, Z-axis ball screws or whatever you would call these threaded rods from the coupler is not really what I intended to do. I was going to use a rigid coupler here and change to this flexible one at the last minute. Um, so this is going to keep any um, any play or any, I shouldn't say play, it's any misalignment in these two shafts. Uh, it's going to let them kind of wiggle a little bit, which is a good thing in these systems. You don't want to over constrain them uh, or else you're going to bind and, and jam and stuff like that. So that helps with it, but the detriment is Obviously, it's got to carry the whole weight of this, which is not good. So, uh, if we head over to CAD, I have designed up a little bracket here. It's in orange. Uh, you can see these are the rigid couplers that I was going to use before I switched to the springy ones, but they're not worth changing in CAD. They're about the same uh, overall size. So, uh, I've designed this part. If I go open that part, you can see, I'll roll it back a little bit. It's actually not very difficult. I'm not very good at SolidWorks, really. Uh, I'm pretty new, especially to this like kind of 3D lofting and surfaces sort of stuff. So uh, I started with just some in-context features here to kind of reference this part to my assembly. And as I go down, there's the basic loft. He just goes from this square here, which is just a, a sketch, to this other sketch down here, uh, the bottom side of this ring. And the rest of these features in this tree are simply the holes that go all the way through uh, so that I can put some, some screws into T-nuts on the back there. And uh, then I fill it a bunch of stuff, which is probably not the best way to do this because the fillet doesn't really like it. It kind of craps out a lot but um, so I continued adding some features I added the hole for the uh, the threaded rod to go through and just a few more fillets so that's the part a 608 ZZ bearing is going to snap in here it's a, a bearing like this one so uh, it's just a little skate bearing uh, they're really common and really cheap so they're not really meant to be used as a thrust bearing I don't think but this bearings uh, 
radial load is something like 600 pounds. So uh, it should be just fine in, in thrust like this for what I have to hold up. It's like probably 15 pounds or something I'm holding. I'm actually holding it on the stepper motors uh, um, uh, bearings in thrust as well. And they're within spec uh, holding this all this weight. So basically I am going to print those brackets out. I'm going to stick them on this threaded rod up here, mount it to the side of the extrusion, one on either side, and that should support this but still allow it the, uh, the motion. So uh, hopefully that'll give me some more consistency down here. I haven't really been having any trouble with consistency, but I haven't spanned the entire bed yet. So I really want to get this spring out of this and uh, get it a lot more rigid before I start doing some really big prints. I don't want to fail one for some reason, something I can fix easily. So Anyway, I'm going to print those out and uh, kind of see how they go. They're pretty big overhangs, so uh, let's go over to uh, Kira real fast. And I've already dropped this part in here, actually. Uh, I'm at about 20% infill. I mistakenly called this uh, uh, support material in a previous video, but it is infill. Uh, support material is a separate thing. Support material, actually, you can see might be needed right here where this comes over and maybe here, but uh, I'm gonna try my luck without it and see how it goes. So this is the first part I tried printing. Uh, you can see I had some overhang issues down here. This is what I was worried about. So it, it does what I call the Yoda chin effect because it has nowhere for this to go. And uh, I noticed this on the Yule Yoda guy. Uh, you can see his chin sort of gets a little funky. So that's the first place it's actually lower in one spot than it was uh, beforehand or on any other layer below that. So. Uh, he gets this little nub. I think I may even cut this off. It might have been a loop or something, but either way, that was uh, that's the quarter scale of the Yoda and uh, Thingiverse that I printed. And uh, you know, you got to print Yoda basically. So just see how he goes. Anyway, uh, so I think I can cut these off and probably have just a perfectly usable part. And it's kind of around the back anyway, so I'm not really that concerned about how it looks. But in general, you can see pretty good. Um, you know, not the nicest lines ever here, but this was at 70 millimeters per second. The bottom looks pretty darn good. A little fuzziness on the first layer there where it's kind of pulling stuff around. Oh, and I got these tweezers too. They were three bucks when they were really great to pull the nubs off of the, uh, the hot end. So anyway, they're good for cleaning up a little bit, but they don't really 
pull this stuff off very well. So I can clean that one up, but I think I'm going to try to print him again. Or actually, rather, I already have. So this is the one from the time lapse. It may or may not be a mirror. I can't remember how they all went together, but um, looks pretty good, I think. I've got a ton of light to uh, emphasize how, you know, the, the layer thickness here and such couple little hairs and such but nothing too bad so this is that support material uh, that I put in to fix that part so I think all you have to do on these this is about my second one to do is just snap it off like that so it still leaves some crusties down here but you can see um, this one actually let's see my third one came out a little nicer it's just a little plus sign here that let's see if I can get that in the light a little plus sign here that uh, you just break right off and then you know you hit that with some sandpaper got some other sections that probably could have used support here or if I was a little better at SolidWorks I might have actually just made it where there were no overhangs but um, either way I think it was pretty good for a single single print head able to print this in uh, just this one orientation so I got a little nub here too but I think I'm printing too hot right now I need to turn that down and get some better uh, bridging going on so maybe I'll make a future video on bridging um, trying to dial that in a little better than it is but either way I've got a good part there uh, let's see back to this first part got my uh, 608ZZ skate bearing here and this part it just fits right in there that's pretty good I oversized that hole by uh, a half a millimeter and let's see if I can find my screws I can't but there's socket heads that go in here and so that's just going to mount to the side of the extrusion like so and I think it's good. Now I'm really happy actually with how strong these are. I really, I mean I probably could break it but it, I mean it would most likely delaminate this but it's really darn strong. I'm really happy with it. I was a little worried that I'd have to make these solid or something like that but I mean they're really strong so uh, I'm going to clean them up a little bit and put them on and uh I think that pretty much does it for this upgrade, and uh, hopefully I will have some much smoother uh, Z motion after this. It'll, it'll keep it from wiggling around so much. We'll see if that comes through in the print quality, but uh, who knows? Put Yoda back on there. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the videos. Mm -hmm.